Good morning and welcome to morning prayer for September 20th. Today is Wednesday after the 16th Sunday after Pentecost. Today we also remember John Coleridge Patterson, Bishop of Melanesia, Melanesia and his companions, martyrs, uh, year 1871. It, today is also an Ember Day. Thus says the high and lofty one who inhabits eternity, whose name is holy. I dwell in the high and holy place and also with the one who has a contrite and humble spirit to revive the spirit of the humble and to revive the heart of the contrite. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and, sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us all our sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen us in all goodness. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep us in eternal life. Amen. Lord, open our lips. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The mercy of the Lord is everlasting. Come, let us adore him. Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving, and raise a loud shout to him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God, and a great King above all gods. In his hand are the caverns of the earth, and the heights of the hills are his also. The sea is his, for he made it, and his hands have molded the dry land. Come, let us bow down and bend the knee and kneel before the Lord, our maker. For he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Oh, that today you would hearken to his voice. The mercy of the Lord is everlasting. Come, let us adore him. A portion of this, the psalm we are will be reading today is Psalm 72, found on 685 in the Book of Common Prayer. Give the king your justice, O God, and your righteousness to the king's son, that he may rule your people righteously and the poor with justice, that the mountains may bring prosperity to the people and the little hills bring righteousness. He shall defend the needy among the people. He shall rescue the poor and crush the oppressor. He shall live as long as the sun and moon endure from one generation to another. He shall come down like rain upon the mown field, like showers that water the earth, in his time shall the righteous flourish. There shall be abundance of peace till the moon shall be no more. He shall rule the sea from he shall rule from sea to sea, and from the river to the ends of the earth. His foes shall bow down before him and his enemies lick the dust. The kings of Tarshish and of all the isles shall pay tribute, and the kings of Arabia and Sabah offer gifts. All kings shall bow down before him, and all the nations do him service. He shall deliver the poor who cries out in distress and the oppressed who has no helper. He shall have pity on the lowly and poor. He shall preserve the lives of the needy. He shall redeem their lives from oppression and violence and dear shall their blood be in his sight. Long may he live and may there be given to him gold from Arabia. May prayer be made for him always and may they bless him all the day long. May there be abundance of grain on the earth, growing thick even to the hilltops. May its fruit flourish like Lebanon and its grain like grass upon the earth. May his name remain forever and be established as long as the sun endures. And may all the nations bless themselves in him and call him blessed. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who alone does wondrous deeds. And blessed be his glorious name forever. And may all the earth be filled with his glory. Amen. Amen. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. A reading from the first book of Kings. For three years, Aram and Israel continued without a war, but in the third year, King Jehoshaphat of Judah came down to the king of Israel. The king of Israel said to his servants, Do you know that Ramoth Gilead belongs to us, yet we are doing nothing to take it out of the hand of the king of Aram? He said to Jehoshaphat, will you go with me to battle at Ramoth Gilead? Jehoshaphat replied to the king of Israel, I am as you are. My people are your people. My horses are your horses. But Jehoshaphat also said to the king of Israel, 
inquire first for the Lord, word of the Lord. And then the king of Israel gathered the prophets together, about 400 of them, and said to them, Shall I go to battle against Ramoth Gilead, or shall I refrain? They said, Go up, for the Lord will give it into the hand of the king. But Jehoshaphat said, Is there no other prophet of the Lord here of whom we may inquire? The king of Israel said to Jehoshaphat, There is still one other by whom we may inquire of the Lord, Micaiah, son of Imlah. But I hate him, for he never prophesies anything favorable about me, but only disaster. Jehoshaphat said, Let the king not say such a thing. Then the king of Israel summoned an officer and said, Bring quickly Micaiah, son of Im Imlah. So the king of Israel and King Jehoshaphat of Judah were sitting on their thrones, arrayed in their robes at the threshing floor at the entrance of the gate of Samaria, and all the prophets were prophesying before them. Zedekiah, son of Chenah, made for himself horns of iron, and he said, Thus says the Lord, with these you shall gore the Arameans until they are destroyed. All the prophets were prophesying the same and saying, Go up to Ramoth Gilead and triumph. The Lord will give it into the hand of the king. The messenger who had gone to summon Micaiah said to him, Look, the words of the prophets are one accord, and they're favorable to the king. Let your word be like the word of one of them, and speak favorably. But Micaiah said, As the Lord lives, whatever the Lord says to me, that I will speak. When he came, when he came to the king, the king said to him, Micaiah, shall we go to Ramoth Gilead to battle, or shall we refrain? He answered him, Go up and triumph. The Lord will give it into the hand of the king. But the king said to him, how many times must I make you swear to tell me nothing but the truth in the name of the Lord? And then Micaiah said, I saw all Israel scattered on the mountains like sheep that have no shepherd. And the Lord said, these have no master. Let each one go home in peace. The king of Israel said to Jehoshaphat, did I not tell you that he would not prophesy anything favorable about me, but only disaster? Then Micaiah said, therefore, hear the word of the Lord. I saw the Lord sitting on his throne and all the hosts of heaven standing beside him in the right and to the left of him. And the Lord said, who will entice Ahab so that he may go up and fall at Ramoth Gilead? Then one said one thing and another said another until a spirit came forward and said before the Lord, uh, stood before the Lord saying, I will entice him. How? The Lord asked him. He replied, If I I will go out, I will go out and be a lying spirit in the mouth of all his prophets. And the Lord said, You are to entice him, and you shall succeed. Go out and do it. So you see, the Lord has put a lying spirit in the mouth of all your prophets. The Lord has decreed disaster for you. Then Zedekiah, son of Chana, came up to Micaiah slapped him on the cheek and said, which way did the spirit of the Lord pass from me to speak to you? And Micaiah replied, you will find out on that day when you go in to hide in an inner chamber. The king of Israel then ordered, take Micaiah, return him to Ammon, the governor of the city, and to Joash, the king's son, and say, this says the king, put this fellow in prison, feed him on reduced rations of bread and water until I come in peace. Micaiah said, if you return in peace, the Lord has not spoken by me. And he said, hear you peoples, all of you. The word of the Lord. Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has dawned upon you. For behold, darkness covers the land, deep gloom and shrouds the people. But over you, the Lord will rise, and his glory will appear upon you. Nations will stream to your light, and kings to the brightness of your dawning. Your gates will always be open by day or night. They will never be shut. They will call you the city of the Lord, the Zion of the Holy One of Israel. Violence will no more be heard in your land, ruin or destruction within your borders. You will call your walls salvation and all your portals praise. <clears throat> the sun will no more be your light by day. By night, you will not need the brightness of the moon. The Lord will be your everlasting light and your God will be your glory. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. A reading from the Gospel according to Matthew. As he walked by the Sea of Galilee, he saw two brothers, Simon, who was called Peter, and Andrew, his brother, casting a net into the sea, for they were fishermen. And he said to them, follow me, and I will make you fish for people. 
Immediately they left their net, nets and followed him. And as they went from there, he saw two older brothers, James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John, in the boat with their father Zebedee, mending their nets, and he called them. Immediately they left the boat and their father and followed him. Jesus went throughout Galilee, teaching in their synagogues and proclaiming the good news of the kingdom and curing every disease and every sickness among the people. And so his fame spread throughout all Syria, and they brought to him all the sick, those who were afflicted with various diseases and pains, de uh, demoniacs, epileptics, and paralytics, and he cured them. And great crowds and great crowds followed him from Galilee, the Decapolis, <clears throat> Jerusalem, Judea, and from beyond the Jordan. The word of the Lord. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel. He has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty Savior, born of his house, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets, he promised of old that he would save us from enemies from the hands of all who hate us. He promised to show mercy to our fathers, our fathers, to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath he swore to our father Abraham. <clears throat> to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear all the days of our life. You, my child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way. To give his people a knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of their sins and the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Show us your mercy, O Lord. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world. Lord, keep this nation under your care. Let your way be known upon earth. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten. Create in us clean hearts, O God. Almighty God, you called your faithful servant, God, John Coleridge Patterson, and his companions to witness to the gospel and by their labors and sufferings raised up a people for your own possession. Pour out your Holy Spirit upon your church in every land that by this service, by the service and sacrifice of many, your holy name may be glorified and your and your kingdom enlarged through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, the giver of all good gifts, in your divine providence, you have appointed various orders in your church. Give your grace, we humbly pray, to all who are now called to any office and ministry for your people, and so fill them with the truth of your doctrine and clothe them in with holiness of life that they may, be faith they may faithfully serve you to the glory of your great name and for the benefit of the Holy Church, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns, with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Almighty and everlasting God, by whose spirit the whole body of your faithful people is governed and sanctified, receive our supplications and prayers which we offer before you for all members of your holy church, that in their vocation and ministry they may truly and devoutly serve you through our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication to you. You have promised through your well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of us. 
Fulfill now, Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth, and in the age to come, life everlasting. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. May the God of hope fill us with all joy and peace and believing through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And I hope everyone has a wonderful day ahead. Thanks again for joining in Morning Project.